Yo, everybody, my name's Iman, and let's get down to science. So we all know the basic idea of how a hot air balloon works. We have hot gas inside the balloon, which is open to the bottom, and because that hot gas is less dense than the gas outside, it's just air, but it's less dense, that balloon rises, it floats up in the air around it. So I started thinking, water has the same effect. So can the concept of a hot air balloon work inside water where there's no air? So let's dig in. So the concept is pretty simple. Here I have a container of hot water. This has just been recently boiled. And then here I have two containers of cold water. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some dye, food dye, to try and demonstrate this idea that, well, we know hot, hot air, hot liquid rises, but it's, it's good to be able to see it. So, I'm gonna put this container on top of this container here, okay? And now they're physically touching through the plastic, but they're not actually making contact with each other. But you've got a source of hot water down here, and a source of cold water here. And for reference, we'll have another one here. So this is just normal cold water. All right, so if we take some food dye here, okay, and watch, I'm gonna bring it all the way to the bottom and then I'm gonna drop it in. So all the way to the bottom, I'm gonna drop some in, which is down the bottom of the container. You can see it's just staying there. It's not moving that much. Now. Watch what happens when I do the same thing to this water. So I'm gonna bring it down in and drop it down the bottom. And then I'll bring it back up. I'll give it a little time because it is, the, the cold water at the top is quite cold. But hopefully you can start to see that it's starting to rise, okay? You can see swirls inside here. All right, and after some time's passed, you can definitely see the difference here. This liquid's very much staying here. Still a bit of diffusion is when I put it in, but this one's really spreading more, and that's because the heat here is starting to act on this liquid, and the water molecules have more energy so they'll be able to move more. But specifically, it's this rising because that water becomes less dense as the molecules spread apart. And that pocket of water becomes lighter, so it rises. So we should be able to utilize this to our advantage and hopefully make a contraption that can use that same effect in the water, just like a hot air balloon would in air. So there's one main issue, and that is that when we have a hot air balloon, we have fire at the bottom of the basket, heating up the air around, and that air rises. Well, we can't have fire inside water very easily, so we will need to figure out a way of creating that source of heat inside the water. And I think I found the perfect solution. So here I have nichrome wire. So this, is a very, very strong wire, and it's resilient to heat. So you can put a lot of heat into it without the wire actually disintegrating and burning up. And I'm gonna demonstrate this now. So I'll just take a chunk of that wire, a little piece of it, and I'm going to resistively heat it. So I'm gonna put current through it and heat it. So here I have my little power supply. If I turn on the current, I can see instantly that wire starts glowing. Get it to focus there. So red hot, okay? And then I can turn the current down. I get nothing. Right. So as we go up, bang, heat. And then eventually, if you do put enough in, it can actually break. But what we're gonna be doing is using this for our source of heat in the water, exactly like a kettle, 
but obviously in this case the filament is a lot thinner. So I'm going to wrap the nichrome wire around a screwdriver just so I can get it. There's a little bit more surface area there so we can get a bit more heat. So it's almost like a filament now, right? So I'm going to cut that off and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to create a hot air balloon. So I thought what I might try is use this clear container lid here, spray can lid, and I'm going to try and position this inside here. Okay, so that's going to be in there, and then I'm going to hold these alligator clips on to make contact. So the idea, hopefully, if it works, is that I'm going to then create a high temperature region in there. And while this is in the water, I'm going to make sure that the water, I get the water out of it so it doesn't float on its own with air. And then I'm going to try and heat it up. Now, one thing that will evidently happen when you're heating water to a very high degree is you are going to get bubbles. You are going to get gas. That gas is going to be steam. There might be some dissolved gases that come out as well, but we are probably going to get a lot of steam production. So that could affect the results a little bit, but it's still going to hopefully get us the same result, which is that we're going to be lighter than the surrounding water and it should rise. But um, that's going to be that set up. And then here I've got a jar of water, normal temperature water here. And so hopefully once I start down there and get it all set up, I should be able to experiment and see with, with the heat, does it rise? Now it's important to note that it's not going to really glow like it did outside the water because all the water is cooling it down. So the heat's going straight out from the wire into the water and trying to heat the water up. And you'll probably see that this water will start to heat up quite quickly, even though there is quite a lot of it. So I've got that on in this little shape in this little shape there and you can see those two ends are where I'm going to put my electrodes on. Wrap it around there a little bit just so it makes contact. Yes, okay. Now if I turn this on now it's probably going to melt the plastic so I'm going to pop it in the water first but the idea is I want to try and get these wires out of the way a little bit because I don't want them to interfere with the buoyancy of this device. All right, so let's begin. Let's pop this in the water and first I'm going to move it to the side so all the air can escape. All right, so that's now got all the air out, so hopefully that'll be neutrally buoyant. Well, it shouldn't really float. And it isn't. It's staying down the bottom as we would expect it should. All right, so it's going to be a bit of trial and error, but uh, let's start with low current. So on we go. And let me start upping the current. No, oh, I think I can start hearing it crackle away, just like a kettle. Yeah, so <laughs> let me get this mic up and should actually be able to hear that it's, it's cracking away. And that's really the gas being produced inside. Oh, look at that. We've actually got some gas being produced in there. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we obviously did get a little bit of, and see now the current's gone straight down. So that's made a cut in the line and that's now an open circuit. So let's pull that out and see what we've got. Yep, 
Yep, so you can see there, get the camera really to focus there. Just in that corner, it's actually cut off. So obviously if I had thicker wire, that would probably work a bit better produce a little bit more heat, but then I'd need a lot more current as well. All right, let's contact it back, pop that back in. Let's get, try to get a bit more floating happening. Get all that air out. That's nearly nine amps there. Getting pretty hot pretty quick. You can really hear it. it, sounds like a kettle. And yeah, I can feel it. It's starting to actually heat the water. Yeah, it looks like there's gases being trapped in there. It's really getting pretty hot. I can feel it, the whole, whole water is rising in temperature. Can I go higher? without snapping that wire. It's 10 amps, that's maxed out the, the current on this supply. I could use a, uh, a hotter element, but I just feel like, or a bigger element, I just feel like it's going to be hard, it's going to be heavier and it's going to be hard to support it. So I would think that the smaller the element, the, the more I'm going to get that effect happening. Look, look at that, burnt out. <laughs> Definitely burnt out. So it must have actually created a little bubble and just burnt the hell out of it. Nothing like the smell of fresh plastic in the morning. Yeah, that's actually, that's actually uh, melted now <laughs> onto the plastic. Even under the water, probably created so much heat that it just, looks like it just melted. Wonder what happens if we just leave it. See, that's 270 watts in a very, very small space. Now, obviously, I could use a, uh, a battery to directly get more current into there, but I need a little bit of control at it. And you look at that. It's starting to rise, people. Look at that. We have rising up. Look at that. Boom. And I'll tell you what, as soon as it gets up, that's going to that's gonna short circuit. As soon as it gets up and there's enough gas in there, boom. Current flow. Extreme. That's going to happen. There's no doubt about it. I've been on to the side. Because it's these wires that's causing us grief here. See that? If I move those... Yeah, that water, that just wants to run free. It's like, let me go, I want to rise. Yeah, ow, that, that water is now getting quite toasty. It's definitely more than sauna temperature in here now. But it's definitely, whoop, there we go, bang. Short it out. Oh, actually, somehow we've still got... <laughs> it probably shorted out and then melted itself back together. Yeah. It's definitely hot. It's definitely hot. Oh, yeah. 
Look, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this water because that's now getting, you know, towards tea temperature. So <laughs> I'm going to replace that water with some cold water because now it's all hot. Yeah, look at this. It's fused. This is insane. It's actually this bit here has now welded itself. See this bit here? It's now welded itself to the alligator clip. It's so it's obviously it's broken off, it's gotten so hot, and then it's just landed back here and welded itself shut. And there was still current flowing, so it must have happened pretty damn quickly. But then it made contact again, so it, it, it repaired itself in battle, which is, you know, pretty insane. Yeah, but it is rising. You can see it's rising. Look at it, rising. Rising, rising, rising. Yes, 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 yes. And then boom, it gets to the side and some weird things happen. It's like it doesn't like being on the side. And you can see that all the heat is now leaking off it. But yeah, it's... um. Oh, bam. <laughs> and then, you know, you get that happening. So yeah, proof of concept is there. It's definitely working. So yeah, the concept works. Um, I'll probably workshop a little bit and, you know, might be able to make it portable with a battery, remote control, etc. Try it in a pool. But yeah, the idea works. You know, can something be done with it? Maybe. I don't think it's very efficient. Um, there are you know, better ways to propel yourself through water um, and through air. So yeah, always looking out for new ideas, new kinds of propulsion. So remember, dream big and make it happen.